Hello everyone, thanks for dropping by. Sorry I'm a bit late today, but I've been waiting for a parcel to be delivered. I bought a Dekine 205cm coffin bag, a boundary one, for all me boots, gear and all the rest of clothes and me skis when I buy them in October. And I didn't want to be doing a video and then the doorbell goes. Anyway, it's just been delivered, so now I can do this video. As you know, that's the Chevrolet Corvette, the latest and greatest one. And the got the V8, the ubiquitous American V8 in the back. Would I buy one? I don't know. I've never even seen a Corvette. But surprisingly enough, I found out the Corvette line was launched in 1953. So that makes it more ingrained in American car culture than last week's Mustang was. Anyway, enough about that. As you know, the one of the results of millions of guys going MGTOW or taking the red pill is they choose to live on their own. And that is not necessarily, not necessarily restricted to America or Canada, but it also extends over here in Europe. Because looking around, I found this. As you can see, it's a site called Solo Living. And as you can see, the countries where solo households are commonplace. Now this was done on October 24th in 2022. The world champion house for pe people living alone, surprisingly enough, is over here in Europe in N Norway. As you scroll down, there are nations on the there are nations where just under half of all households have a person living alone. The nation where people live alone, least live alone, is Afghanistan. No surprise there. But Norway is a world champion. If you were to randomly knock on doors nearly every second time, you'd be greeted by someone living alone. So if you scroll down, the nations with the highest percentage of one-person households are over 40% of households live solo are Norway, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Germany and Estonia. Now all those countries have a high degree of toxic feminism in them where the women in those countries are ultra picky and they just don't want the average guy which is where they should be choosing a future husband from. Instead they all want the top 10 or 1%. So you could give a guess that a lot of these countries have women living alone. Doesn't say how much the MGTOW philosophy has extended into those countries and how, what percentage of men are in that. But it gives you an idea that the living solo is becoming a worldwide thing even though it's not extended to the third world as yet. And if you drop down Solo living in households in other countries, in the here in Britain, America, Canada, and Australia, between one and four and one in three households are solo. There's the United States at 28 percent. There's 27.6 Canada, and but the bottom is South Korea. Well, South Korea has a lot of solo people because it's so expensive to get married in South Korea. That's why the births rate has gone down and then living alone is less common in other countries in ten, only 10% 10 in Mexico well the Hispanics are very family orientated also in China and you could say the same for India and then we go about psychological and economics of living alone what matters now that's just the a overview of what what solo countries are commonplace. Going back to America, I found this. As you can see, it's the United States Census, so it's a government site and government figures. More than a quarter of Americans only households have only one person. And a quarter, 27.6% of all US occupied houses are one person. In 2020, up from 7.7 in 1940. Well, in 1940, America was very family-orientated, like in 1950. Then 
the second wave femini feminism kicked off in 1964 and that just set the ball rolling for more and more Americans to live on their own instead of getting married. And he said the share of people living alone increased every decade from 1940 to 2020. The largest increase happened from 1970 to 1980 when the share increased from 17.6% to 22.7%. Now, second wave feminism kicked off around 1964. So any girl who was, say, 10 years old in 1964, she'd be falling into her primary years in 1970 to 1980 when she'd been thoroughly indoctrinated with toxic feminism and I don't need no men. But anyway, it says countries, the counties, sorry, with the highest percentage of households in one person aged 65 or over living alone were concentrated in the central Midwest. Not being American, I wouldn't really know where that area was. And it says the overall share of people living alone inched up from 26.7% to 27.6% between 2010 and 2020. That could be the MGTOW effect. So did the share from 9.4 to 11.1 one-person households headed by adults aged 65 and over. Now there's a rise in the grey divorce rate in America, so that could be that. And then if you drop down one-person households a percentage of all US households, as you can see, 1940 to 2020. Second wave feminism kicked off here. Third wave feminism kicked off here. Fourth wave feminism kicked off here. As you can see, there's a quite a rise in ages. These ages 15 to 64 is that. 65 and older is that. That could be the subject of grey divorce. That's why it's gone up. And then if you drop down, you have the maps of America. One person households all ages are the percentage of all households 2020. Now, those of you who are Americans over in America, you can have a look to see which area you live in and it gives you an idea of the percentage of single houses in your neck of the woods, so to speak. If you click on that, you get the bigger one, and once again, bigger. So if you you can go back, come on, come on, thank you. And it goes one person households aged 15 to 64. So if you're in that age group of the percentage of all households, you can again and if you drop down again one person household age 65 and over if you're over 65 it'll give you an idea the percentage in your part of them of the united states and then older adults living alone more prevalent in rural counties and los angeles county california the native most populous county with 3.4 million households 16.1% of households there are headed by someone aged 16, 15 to 64 living alone. And then, but in Pulaski County in Kentucky, which has just 26,405 occupied households, about 14.8% house percent households had one person households aged 15 to 64 and 13.5 percent had households aged 65 and older living alone that could be the result of the great divorce in kentucky and most prominently paul lasky but anyway he says share of one person households in five of the most least populous u.s counties then it goes most populous it's from Los Angeles to San Diego and the least populous Liberty County in GA, I think that's Georgia and bottom of the list is Pulaski in Kentucky 
and that's the US Census Bureau now to back that up whoops I found this CBS in Austin which would be in Texas raising trend of living solo new census data revealed nearly 30 percent of American households are single occupancy which backs up what it shows in that ah come on you dozy sod don't now this is a home in Tennessee and according to data your census share of one person households has more than tripled and then it shows what it said before the percentage of American adults who live alone is around 14 percent now 14 percent of America's population is about little over 46 million people so 46 million Americans live on their own you could and if it's 50 50 that's 23 million American men have taken the red pill and the MIG the MGTOW philosophy and they're not getting married and this is more a thing about women I think our generation particularly independence and freedom is something we have been seeking for so long explained Daniela per Pereira sounds Spanish she's a real estate broker in Charlotte North Carolina and she lives alone I'm the happiest stage of my life did she buy the property or did she get it via a divorce that's that woman from Game of Thrones I think more of them can afford to live alone to live alone says another woman social scientist author of a forthcoming book single at heart and then women in the past are more often tethered to their husband for economic life support now more women have their own jobs also women also have their own home via divorce and then it says according to the hill solo living movement intersects with several other social trends Americans are marrying later if at all the nation is aging the national birth rate is falling people are living longer or they were until the pandemic arrived which is the old whipping boy again and then when you're living alone everything is on your own shoulders of course and then however DePolo said living alone does not mean you are cut off and it actually might lead to some one being more social well I live on my own and I'm social via the internet and YouTube but anyway this is CBS in Austin reporting what the National Census Bureau in America has said over here it's the same in Britain as I found this number of people living alone here from 96 to 2023 now dad rejoined mum in the next world in 2017 so 7 million 715 thousand people here in Britain are living solo and that includes me and I've, as you see it going up no indication about what the age group are but it says as of 2023 approximately 8 0.38 million people lived alone here in Britain an increase of 34,000 now could that be British guys taking the red pill I just don't know but the American government tends to be getting a little bit worried about the number of guys living on their own because I found this wealth enhancement group and it says the cost of being single why could it be financially devastating and this is just a frightening piece to get people scared of living on their own especially if they're a guy thanks to laws policies and general practice that favor married couples single people end up paying more than married people while earning less and missing out on important benefits the cost may add up quicker than you think it boils down to one key point being single could be financially devastating and then we got the examples single people earn less income but if a single guy's living on his own he doesn't need that much money to live on my income's around about twenty thousand US dollars a year and I'm managing quite well 
Singles have fewer benefits than workplace protections. That would be an American thing. I wouldn't know about that. Do single people pay more in taxes? Then we have a graph. The 10,000, 0 to 11,000 dollars a year, 12, and 12% tax, 20, 22, and so on. The average wage in America is around about 58,000 dollars, which is this. So married family joint filling is 89. But if she divorces him and takes half his money, that's, uh, he leaves him with 45, so he's no better off than if he'd stayed single. Plus he's lost half his stuff, so he might as well not get married and keep all his stuff and the same salary that he'd be on and if he got divorced. And of course, even if you go at the top end, the 1 and 10% of American men, it you're on 578,126 plus dollars per year but you're only on 693,751 if you're married and if she takes divorces you and takes half your stuff you drop down to 300,000 dollars plus per year but if you stay single you'd be 150 odd thousand 200,000 dollars a year better off and then you get social security benefits only if you get married this is the carrot the spousal benefits and survivor benefits I don't know what that is so I'm not going to comment and how marriage enhances the benefits of IRS um, internal individual retirement accounts I have no idea must be that 401k thing that Americans have and spousal IRS IRAs bypass contribution limits of non-working spouses I, IRA inheritance rules benefit spouses that's another thing if you get divorced what happens to your inheritance in your will and that does she also have a, a say in what she gets it all adds up to a big difference and then examples now further frightening from the American establishment I found this this is CNN health US adults living alone may face higher risk of cancer studies suggest now this was done on October 19th 23 as I said that was done 20th of September 23 and it goes down Adults living by themselves have a high risk of dying from cancer compared to those who live with others. A new study suggests the share of adults in America who live alone is on the rise. And then it says the journal Cancer found 114,772 working eight adults who lived alone. 2.5 of them died of cancer during the same period. In comparison, 300. 58,876 adults who live with others a much smaller share 1.6 died of cancer now is that a naturally occurring cancer through probably genetics or did any of those people smoke and live an unhealthy lifestyle remember if a guy lives on his own he tends to look after himself better going to the gym and eating healthily are not doing things like smoking or drinking too much or eating food which could trigger off cancer it says adults age 18 to 64 were enrolled in the study and researchers found the strongest associates with those ages 45 to 64 also I've, I've heard and read that stress can bring on cancer so if the guys get divorced then that could trigger off a cancer so that sort of could be a contribution but that is a moot subject we found that working adults living alone had 1.32 times higher risk of cancer than adults living with others and then it goes the proportion of people in america who live alone has climbed in over decades u.s census bureau that's that data shows that proportion of one person households has doubled from 13% or 7 million to 29% or about 38 million households 
and then more yada yada, frightening, don't live alone, get married, etc. Alone and lonely are not the same, yada yada yada. And in addition to the more frightening, I found this, a site called Make It by CNBC. Why is it so expensive to be single in America? This was done October 18th this year, sorry, last year, 2023. And this was written by a woman. Uh, this was also was written by a woman. And was this written by a woman? Doesn't say. Anyway, it's a blog. It says, why is it so expensive to be single in America? Good chance in your area there are singles in your area. Nearly half of adults in America are currently single. And then it goes, cost of living alone, dollar for dollar is cheaper to be in a one-person household. After all, one mouth to feed. But when you add it all up, maintaining a single-person household doesn't exactly doesn't cost exactly half of a two-person household. No, it can only cost about a third. That if you wanted to, you could live fr quite frugally. I don't spend much. My biggest outlay is just the weekly shop apart from the rent of course and the water bill but that's the thing you've got to pay but buying food i can get by on 40 to 50 pound per week that's why it's called a singles tax it says in south carolina it falls around the middle of the all states in terms of cost of living according to missouri economic research and information center a two single person household spends twenty nine thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars a year. A two person household forty seven eight four eight three per year. But what happens when she becomes pregnant? Then it's a three person household. Two person household could split cost down the middle. Uh, and each contribute half of that. Whereas a single someone living on their own should need to cover that plus additional. 6138 but the person can always cut a cut back on the expenses the biggest factor is housing single people not have to choose between getting a roommate or covering the entire cost of a house what if you live in an apartment i live in a small two-bedroom apartment and my co living costs are quite manageable for my income then we got expensive cities as New York, where well, New York's always been expensive. Renting a studio apartment is 3550 a month. And means someone living alone would pay 42600 a year in rent. Well, if you got a job, if you're a single guy in the top 10 or 1%, you could afford that. And then the financial benefits of marriage are written in the laws of the land. That's another carrot to get make guys to be marry in america and then it's yada 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 a different kind of financial freedom not all bad news for singles and that being said if you want to pay extra for your finances as a single person you don't have to have the financial safety net of a partner's income the parents friends or other family members may be able to help you out i don't agree with that if you're going to fly solo fly solo Remember, the bird with the strongest wings always fly solo. The eagles, the albatrosses, the arctic uh, tern, is it a tern or a swift? A, they fly from the North Pole to the South Pole and back. And the swallows here in Britain fly to Africa to nest and then they come back. And swallows always fly solo. And then it's more important for you to budget, naturally, understand how much money you're making, how much money you're spending. I have a spreadsheet with all my expenditures and income, and every year I just tot everything up, and I find out where I can cut back on things. And then yada, yada, yada. In addition to that, I found this. Go banking rate, three reasons it's so expensive to be single in America. And this was done on November 6, uh, 2023. Being single has been a steady growing trend in the 60s, saying what the other articles have said. 
the cost of housing, shouldering more tax liability and base expenses are all on you if you're single. No shit, Sherlock. We all know that. CNBC reporting nearly half of US adults are currently single. 46% of the population consists of 117.6 million unmarried, divorced or widows Americans older than 18. And then it goes the cost of being single, housing, taxes, no financial safety net, that's the living with another person. But if she loses a job, then there's just one financial net. And then ways to make single life more affordable. And then it's just ways to get extra money. Aggressive, aggressively budget, that's just living within your means. Budgeting is key not to only organise your funds each month, but to ensure that you have the funds you need to cover all your necessary expenses. Stay out of debt, naturally, and hopefully have some money, save some money each month. Also, have a reserve account. I've got a reserve account. I got that information off mum and dad. And being single is getting more expensive these days, and the benefits of marriages and partnerships continue to outweigh the financial benefits of being single again. That's the carrot for all these guys in America that have taken the red pill and gone the MGTOW way. And that is that article to more frightening. Now, it's not all bad. I found this in Chewit TurboTax. Five reasons it's great to be single at tax time. The American taxation system is different from here in Britain. So, being single brings several big upsides, like having the freedom to spend your time and money on yourself, etc. Yada, yada, yada. What does it mean to file as a single? People who are married, individuals divorced. We know that. How do you know if you pay taxes? Tax file status. And then... Single file under 65, generally you need to file federal income taxes if your gross income is 13850 a year or more for tax. We don't do that over here in Britain. It's a totally different system. Now, if you're American and you're single, what are the advantages of filing for s as singles? Less complicated tax, maybe either to certify certain deductions and then... You don't have to worry about unequal tax burdens, either to qualify for education tax credits, and don't know about that. A uh, lifetime earning credit, um, American Opportunity Tax Credit. You should have a lot of credits in America. Uh, lifetime learning credits, and then we've got some disadvantages as tax. Fewer tax breaks. Higher household expenses, well, you can budget for that. Bigger rent payments, if you move to somewhere, cheaper rent, if you can't afford it, because Americans tend to move around a lot. Other single people tax disadvantages, you end up in a higher tax bracket, and you can have a lower standard deduction. I... Uh, 2023 standard deduction rules married filing jointly was 27,700 for single filers 13,850 that could be a tax rebate I just don't know and then filing status single married standard deduction but if she divorces you she takes off your stuff then you go back to being that anyway so what's the point in getting married and we still keep the half of the stuff that she would have taken anyway. Then we get potential ways to say, well, feeling a tax person, a more yada yada, yakety yak. That's. But despite all that, I found this: why some men decided to stay unmarried. There are more complex reasons for male singlehood, particularly long term. Toxic feminism, for one. Some unmarried men feel deficient while others adapt and acclimate to singlehood. That could be the man-child poke while others adapt. 
to singlehood. Guys are adaptable, women are generally not. Potential benefits of singlehood include independence, autonomy and self-sufficiency. Guys are good at being self-sufficient. And then we go in the article, unmarried men are often single out of their singlehood. It says, the sensation of singlehood, change of climate, traditional norms, time's up. Nothing about MGTOW or femininity, not femininity, feminism. The Bachelor of Benefits and Burdens, a book. I might have covered this article before, I can't remember. And Single Solutions. And finally, I found this, Marriage.com, written by another woman. This was written by a woman. Uh, written by the Timur Tax Team. I don't know if there's women in that. This was written by a guy, and this was written by a woman, as I mentioned. Why are men not marrying as much, despite all this fear of how much it costs to be single and the rising um, singles in America? Why men are not marrying as much anymore? Five possible reasons. And just click on that. Five reasons men are not marrying. Perception of loss of freedom. You got that one right. The dread of losing one's ability to make f f to freely make decisions of all aspects of their life can be why some men never marry. Also, because they have fears of potential divorce. I should imagine that this is the primary reason. Single men who avoid marriage may have grown up in a broken home. No. They've seen what women are like. They think history man repeat itself. The problem with this mindset is that all love stories are different. No. If a man you are interested in has been scar scarred by divorce, ask him about his fears and discuss how things might play out differently. See, it's aimed at a woman to ask a man about this. Unwilling to make sacrifices. This is a shaming art reason. Dating apps work out great. I've uh, covered last week the dating app companies are going slowly bankrupt. Need for awareness about the benefits of marriage. This is the carrot again. And then more yada yada. And then FAQs, what percentage of men never married? 23% of American men have never been married. The average age, 28 to 32. That's his prime years when he should be making bank and not getting into a relationship the most common reason for divorce infidelity communication breakdown but infidelity by the guy or by the woman financial issues are always money divergent priorities lack of compatibility among the most common reasons financial implications of marriage he loses half his stuff Marriage is bad for men or women who have not secured themselves finances and are wholly unprepared for the financial, financial responsibilities of running a household. And then the final takeaway. It says, Marriage can benefit men significantly by offering ways to improve their mental and physical health. And of course it covers sex. Where is it? Did... Uh, Whoops, 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 S-E-X. Uh, endless supply of sexual satisfaction. Dating app for a man who is no oh, interest in commitment. For non-committed men who have been imprisonment, men are not marrying for these situations because they feel that their emotional, sexual, social and romantic needs have been met. And then... There you go. That's the one after. Sorry about this. Oops. Sorry about this, people. Ah, I hate it when that thing does happen. Married men have a better sex life country to what you think if you listen to single guys boast about their sex life. Any sensible guy does not mention their sex life to other guys. 
Men who never marry might be unaware of their aspects of marriage. It says, 51% of married men are extremely satisfied with their sex lives. Well, what I've seen on the comments section of YouTube is guys who have been married, the sex dries up after the first child was born. In comparison, only 37% of men living with women without being married to them and 36% of single men could say the same. But it all boils down to finish this off. Men are not getting married. More countries are households, single people. The US government has noticed that more and more Americans are not getting married and they're preferring to live on their own. And that's a rising trend in consensus data. 30% of households and they're getting worried about it. Here in Britain we are. Because I've seen news of things about marriage and that. And it's better, but I don't want to get married. But the cost of being single could be financially devastating. This, this, and this, and this are all frighteners to frighten men to get married to get the population going back because the US government is noticing how MIGCHOW is affecting the entire US economy by guys not wanting to get hitched to a woman and start buying all the things to buy a house which butts up the consumer driven society that America is in. But it's not exactly a black cloud because you can get some benefits on this if you're single at tax time but men don't want to get married and these are five the reasons why they don't i think i'm well over the 30 minute now so sorry it's a bit rambly this week people but i didn't find all that much so i'll stop it now you know the routine like dislike comment subscribe etc it's completely up to you Welcome all the new, new subscribers to this channel. If you like it, stick around. If you don't like it as time goes on, then you can leave. It, it's completely up to you. So that's it for this one. Until next Monday. Bye-bye.